In a single year, 6.36 million Americans were medically recommended by a healthcare provider to practice mind-body therapies like yoga, meditation, and breathing exercises. I mean, we know that 19% of adults used at least one type of mind-body therapy over one year because it's at least mentally therapeutic. But why are literal doctors prescribing it? A recent clinical trial actually found some really interesting relationships between meditation and heart health. And today I'll be breaking it down and talking about some really valuable applications that you can use in your life. What's up everyone, my name is Henrik and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm breaking down a clinical trial looking at the effects of meditation on mental and heart health in high stress caregivers. This was published in January of 2021 by Dr. Lourdes Diaz Rodriguez and others from the University of Granada in Spain, which is also coincidentally the same university as the last clinical trial I reviewed. Let's break it down. Jumping straight into the study design, this was a clinical trial looking at 40 participants with an average age of 44. The primary inclusion criteria for the study were that all participants needed to be informal caregivers, which was defined as taking care of a depend dependent family member who they live with for at least two years, and they personally could not have a history of any cardiovascular or heart problems. In this study, there were two total groups, and the participants were not randomly selected into the groups, but rather by convenience, basically who had time or who was interested in doing meditation. There was a meditation group and there was a control group. And in the control group, caregivers simply received information about meditation, like how it works and the science behind it. But they weren't given any classes, they weren't assigned any times for anything like that. It was just literally information. The experimental meditation group participated in a meditation program that had eight two hour sessions over one month. The meditation program was very standardized and had this approximate schedule led by a meditation trainer. There were 25 minutes of exercises for, for flexibility, like yoga, 25 minutes of exercises for breathing, like different breathing exercises, and then 25 minutes of exercises for body awareness. And this is more of what you stereotypically think of when you think of meditation. Between each of these 25 minutes, there was a short 15 minute lecture or presentation on the scientific basis of the exercises they were about to do. And so that was two hours total. In this study, all the variables were measured before and after the four weeks or the over the one month that the meditation program was done. Happiness was measured, and I can only assume that this is actually pretty hard to accurately identify. But in this study, it was used, uh, it was measured using something called the Lima Happiness Questionnaire, which is a pretty, pretty basic scale looking at these four subsections, and then a total score was created, and that's how they measured happiness. Anxiety and depression symptoms were also measured using something called the Hospital Anxiety and Depression Scale, and this is another pretty standardized scale for looking at this stuff. Cardiovascular variables were also measured, and two of the basic ones are blood pressure and heart rate, which were looked at. But the main one that you probably haven't heard about is called heart rate variability. Basically, in between each heartbeat, there's a short amount of time that passes when your heart isn't beating. And although the time between each heartbeat might sound the same, it's absolutely not the same, and it fluctuates a little bit. And how much it fluctuates is called heart rate variability. Basically, this variation in the time interval between each heartbeat can be really indicative of future heart problems. And this, so the study wanted to see how meditation over time actually affects this. They specifically measured heart rate variability or HRV by analyzing a heartbeat over 10 minutes with an EKG, an electrocardiogram, and they basically got a number. In short, the study wanted to see how meditation affected happiness, anxiety, depression, and a few other cardiovascular measures in people who are typically very stressed. Looking at the results, first looking at the happiness scale, the meditation group significantly increased in happiness in all four of the subsections relative to the control group, which is a great result to see. Looking at the effects on anxiety and depression, the meditation group significantly decreased in anxiety, as shown in this figure here, which is a great result to see, but the, the improvement in depression symptoms was not statistically significant. So we only saw a benefit in anxiety. Looking at the most important results, in my opinion, the heart stuff, Resting heart rate and blood pressure significantly decreased when looking at the meditation group relative to control. And that's typically healthy within reason, of course. So that's a good result to see as well. And looking at heart rate variability, HRV significantly increased in the meditation group uh, relative to baseline and relative to control. Now you might be thinking, is that, a, is that a good or bad thing? Well, let's talk about it. All right, so this study found that meditation improves anxiety, happiness, heart rate, blood pressure, and heart rate variability in high burden caregivers. And all of these are great results. So I just said that HRV increasing is good. Why? So HRV is basically the average interval of time between each heartbeat. 
So more fluctuating of that time is healthy and indicative of someone who is less stressed. The basic reason why is that, is that if your heart rate is more variable, you're more adaptive to different scenarios. Basically, your body can react faster, which is healthier. And I'll quickly note that you can have way too much variability. That can be problematic. But today's results didn't even get anywhere close to that. If you have a lower HRV, you're less resilient and your heart struggles to adapt to changes. And lower HRV can, is seen in cases of diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma, and um, clinical anxiety and depression. Now, today's study is not the first to look at these alternative medical activities on heart rate variability, but it's one of the most recent and it looks at meditation, which I personally think is more applicable. There are two other notable studies. A study in March of 2020 found that a meditation program in normal individuals, not necessarily under high stress, increased HRV as expected, supporting today's results. The other study was from 2011, and it looked at the effects of one session of Reiki, which is supposedly an energy healing technique that promotes relaxation through gentle touch. It specifically looked at burned out healthcare professionals, and, and, it found, and they found that HRV significantly increased. Now, I chose today's study because it adds to the research on the benefits of easy-to-do meditation on important cardiovascular measures in high-stress individuals. From my understanding, Reiki needs to be done by experienced therapists, which there is a larger, it's pretty large monetary and time barrier for. And looking at high-stressed individuals as opposed to normal people is more significant because it shows that even though you're surrounded by stress, taking a break and meditating for a few hours each week significantly improves your health. Now, you might be curious, what is so special about meditation? How can it benefit your heart? Well, in the least, taking yourself out of stressful situations and relaxing and focusing on your breathing can take a significant load off your heart and the rest of your body, which improves you in the long run. Forcing yourself to relax, take your mind off things and focus on nothing can help you. And that's really the scientific basis of why meditation can help. Although we've seen some really applicable results here today, there's one significant limitation in the study design that I did want to note. The people in the study are caregivers who live with the person they take care of. Oftentimes these caregivers don't really have time to leave the house and the ability to do that with this study and socialize with the other people in the study right before and after the meditation program could have affected anxiety, depression, and cardiovascular measures as opposed to the meditation program itself. So although it is important to note this limitation, I still think the study did a wonderful job at implementing this meditation program. And as always, I think it's really interesting to, to see results that are directly applicable that we can put into our lives today. Looking at a short summary with some takeaways, a 2021 clinical trial looking at the effects of a meditation program in high burden caregivers found improvements in anxiety, overall happiness, and heart rate variability. The first two findings are obviously important, but the meditation causing improvement in heart rate variability is a unique finding in high stress caregivers. And it shows that even taking a few hours out of a stressful week to relax can positively impact your heart and your overall health. Maybe consider Googling some meditation or mindfulness strategies or exercises to control your breathing, do some yoga or things like that. And research does suggest they can help. But I will seriously note that meditation is not at all meant to actually replace actual medical care. And it's definitely not considered to be that. If you have any actual heart problems like hypertension, arrhythmia, any other cardiovascular things, absolutely talk to your doctor first and do not solely turn to meditation at all. Doctors can totally refer you to something like meditation, like they do for one in 30 Americans, but talk to them first and make sure that's what's best for you. But besides that, that's all I really had. Um, click that like button if you enjoyed the video and learned something. Subscribe to, check, subscribe to the channel to check out more content and to support it. But thanks for watching and I hope you all learned something. Have a good one.